live on American Family Radio. This is Peter Rosenberg, and this is Hope for the Caregiver. This is the show for you as a family caregiver. More than 65 million Americans right now are standing between a vulnerable loved one and even worse disaster. How do you help caregivers? What does that look like? Why should you do it? That's what this show is all about. Hope for the Caregiver is the conviction that we as caregivers can live a calmer, healthier, and dare I say it, a more joyful life while taking care of someone who deals with heartbreaking realities. Now, maybe you're taking care of an aging parent. A lot of people are. Maybe you're taking care of a child with special needs. Maybe you've got somebody in your circle that is dealing with alcoholism or addiction. All of these are chronic impairments. There's, there's so many different types of chronic impairments. And there's always a caregiver. And that's why we do the show. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840 if you want to follow along. And also you can, um, uh, if you want to call the show, and if you want to follow along on live stream, we're on Hope for the Caregiver on our Facebook page. And you can go out and check out the, the show live. Uh, it will probably drop off because Facebook and I have a long-standing uh, argument when I live stream the show and uh, we get into a battle of wits and I find that they are unarmed. And so I, I if, if it drops off, it drops off. Sorry. Uh, programming note, real quick. Uh, if you want to go out to our webpage at hopeforthecaregiver.com, you can see our latest podcast. And it's my interview with William Lee Golden of the Oak Ridge Boys. And I've got his book here for those of you watching along. And I'll just hold it up here at the camera. And it is a uh, wonderful conversation that he and I had uh, this week. And um, an amazing life. Those of you who have followed the Oak Ridge Boys for any length of time, um, he's the one with the beard. <laughs> and the book is called Behind the Beard. And I think you'll like the interview uh, a lot. There's a lot of, that we put in this and... On our podcast, we can unpack conversations and, and interviews and so forth a little bit easier than I can sometimes on the show here. But I and I wanted to have this conversation with him and and see what uh, some of his thoughts and about uh, his life, his music, his faith, his his uh, um, falls, his recoveries, uh, all kinds of things. And um, and it, I think you'll like the interview. So you can go out to. Uh, hopeforthecaregiver.com and see that. I want to jump right into our song for today. And if you know this song, I'm going to step over here to the caregiver keyboard. I have now stepped to the caregiver keyboard. And those of you regular listeners to the show know that I do this pretty much every week. I find a, a hymn usually or, or some type of song that's going to connect to us as caregivers. And um, play it. I want you to tell me if you know what this song is. And I will give you a hint on this one. Um, the, the guy that wrote it actually once ran for president. Uh, so that's, that's an obscure hint, but, you know, you may get it. But here's, here's the song. You know that tune, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840, and uh, feel free to give us a call on that. All right, let me tell you a story about a farmer who raised chickens. Any of you all raised chickens? Well, this farmer had heard that if you, if you play some music... He was concerned that his chickens were not necessarily um, uh, producing enough eggs. And so he'd heard if you play music for the chickens, then that would help them lay more eggs. So he was a, a flautist. He had a flute. And he went out and sat by the chicken coop and played his 
flute. And he did this for a while, and, and you know, and then he would go about his chores. He got up to do it the next day and did it again. And this went on for several weeks. And he noticed, however, that the, the chickens were not producing any more eggs. But he still kept doing it. And he kept playing and kept playing. Well, he had a neighbor that was watching all this. And the neighbor came to him and said, hey, um, are your chickens laying any more eggs? I've been noticing you do this. He says, no. He said, well, you're going out there every day and you're playing your flute and you're doing the music and, and, the, and the chickens aren't laying any more eggs. Why do you keep doing it? He said, because my music's getting better. As caregivers, we live with individuals who endure things that we cannot change. We cannot improve. We cannot fix it. We cannot take it away. But we can change. We can grow. We can adapt. And along the way, we may discover that we make beautiful music. And we experience beautiful music. Not in what we expected. I, I live with someone whose, whose legs are gone. I can't fix that. It is way beyond my skill set, my power. In fact, all the surgeons that have worked on her can't fix it. But I can change as I care for her. And I can grow as an individual. And along the way, I discovered that there's beautiful music. It's a great day to make music. As we sit there and, and, and accept certain realities that, that are beyond our abilities. How many of you all are in this situation where you have thrown everything you have, you've tried as creatively as you can to somehow fix this situation or change it or improve it? And it doesn't. I know folks that are in relationship with alcoholics who have thrown, and addicts, who have thrown so much money at this, going to rehab and, and everything else, and it doesn't change. And it's beyond your ability. Is there a point where you can maybe change up you and the way you're approaching this and recognize that maybe your responsibility in this is not to fix this individual? but just for you to trust God in it. There's a great scripture that I love, Mark 9. It's one of the, to me, it is one of the best prayers ever uttered in scripture. And Jesus, the, this, this father of this child brought, uh, brought him to Jesus, and the kid was having, a, um, I think it was a demonic possession. Something was going on with the kid. It was pretty messed up. And... Jesus said to him, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, again, it's not the amount of faith that you have. It's the object of our faith. You know, I, I, my faith in itself is, is pointless unless my faith is in Christ. You know, I can have faith in a, in a chair, but that doesn't mean there's going to happen, you know, anything's going to happen. And Jesus said, if you, if you can believe, the implication is believe in what I'm telling you, in me and the power of God in this. All things are possible. And the father of the child, it said, Mark, cried out and said with tears, which I think is the best prayer in all of Scripture, at least for me, it just resonates. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Isn't that a great prayer? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And that's our journey as caregivers. Do we believe? And then will we ask Him to help our unbelief in this? that he can work through all of these things in ways that we can't even imagine. All right? This is Hope for the Caregiver. This is Peter Rosenberger. This is the show for you as a family caregiver. 888-589-8840. We'll be right back. Have you ever struggled to trust God when lousy things happen to you? I have. I'm Gracie Rosenberger, and in 1983, I experienced a horrific car accident leading to 80 surgeries and both legs amputated. I questioned why God allowed something so brutal to happen to me, but over time, my questions changed, and I discovered courage to trust God 
That understanding, along with an appreciation for quality prosthetic limbs, led me to establish Standing with Hope. For more than a dozen years, we've been working with the government of Ghana and West Africa, equipping and training local workers to build and maintain quality prosthetic limbs for their own people. On a regular basis, we purchase and ship equipment and supplies. And with the help of inmates in a Tennessee prison, we also recycle parts from donated limbs. All of this is to point others to Christ, the source of my hope and strength. Please visit StandingWithHope.com to learn more and participate in lifting others up. That's StandingWithHope.com. I'm Gracie, and I am Standing With Hope. He will be strong to deliver me safe, and the joy of the Lord is mine. Peter Roseberger, this is the show for you as a family caregiver. And we're glad that you're with us. That is Gracie, my wife, with West Half, from her CD, Resilient. Go out to hopeforthecaregiver.com. You can figure out how to get that. It's a wonderful CD that she's done. And uh, she's a, she's what a voice. I love, I love listening to her sing. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. Now, I've got a bunch of folks that want to weigh in on our song for the day. Now, if somebody else gets the song, I still want to hear from you. Don't just have to, you don't have to immediately hang up because I want to hear why you think this song is important or what does it mean to you? Uh, the, there, there's a reason I do this every week with the hymns and these songs and sometimes a chorus or whatever. And th- several of them, are, I want to first off <laughs> help reintroduce these to folks who may not have heard them in a while and and miss them, I want to introduce them to a new audience that would benefit greatly from these hymns. And then also because so many of these have a line or a phrase or a melody that is so easy to remember that in the dark times throughout the day and throughout the week, when we're not on the show together here, when we're, we're struggling in the middle of the night, you'll remember that phrase and it'll it'll strengthen you and kind of give you a little bit more clarity on your next step over. And so that's... That's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm hoping to accomplish. Next step over, meaning I mean, you know, take your next step, not passing over into eternity. But so as you're going through uh, stuff like like I did, he touched me one week, you know. And so I want you to go through the day as you struggle with these things, and if you remember that tune, he touched me. Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Well, that's what I did with this song today. And if you can remember nothing else but that lyric from that particular phrase, it, it'll it'll absolutely anchor you throughout the day. I know this because it does it for me and in and, and my circumstances. And I've been a caregiver for 35 years, so I, I know this. And I and I would would you know, I, I really want this for you as well, so that, that when you get in these dark moments that you if you can do nothing else but just remember that. You know, that's why I put on, on my CD, Songs for the Caregiver, I put on um, one of the hymns I put on there was Jesus Loves Me. And I did this with a friend of mine on his uh, trumpet. And and I wanted people to just remember that, wait a minute, we're so busy carrying our loved ones to Jesus. Do we know that, that we need him ourselves? Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yes, he loves my wife, but he loves me too. And he loves you. And here's how we know this, and here's what this means to us. So I'm trying to introduce these these things for us. Let's go to um, David in North Dakota. Good morning, David. How are you feeling? Good morning. I'm feeling good today. How's the weather in North Dakota? Well, right now it is cool down. We had a good rainstorm, uh, the perfect timing for the crops, and we are doing great here. Um, uh, well, I, I send some of that rain, send that rain west, because over here in Montana we are we are we're a little bit dry, <laughs> and we could use it. So uh, I'm 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 not I'm not feeling very good about our fire season this year because we need some rain. But I will. If the Lord rains on the He causes the rain on the just and the unjust, and so uh, we would just continue yes, to sir. ask for rain. But I'm glad you're doing well over there in North Dakota. Do you know the song? Yes, yeah, uh, precious Jesus, precious Jesus, hear the children when they pray. 
Well, nope, that's not it. That's oh, not man. that's not it, David. I'm sorry. You, uh, we don't have some kind of sad trombone playing. Wah wah wah. We don't have that. But that, that's not it. <laughs> Um, it's not it, but I'm going to go, but I want you to know how much I appreciate you listening. Now you got to keep listening. So you see what the song is. And remember the guy that wrote it did run for president one year, uh, way back in the fifties. Um, he didn't go very far, but he did run and he's written several other wonderful songs, but this is one is probably his biggest one. And this is the chorus, but let me go to, uh, thank you so much for the call though, David, I really do appreciate it. And, um, let's go to Faye in Texas. Faye, good morning. How are you feeling? I'm fine. How are you doing? Well, you know, for the shape I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape, Faye. Tell That's me this. Right. Do you know the song? <laughs> yes, sir. I think it, it is no secret what God can do. It is no secret what God can do. It is no secret what God can do. Yeah. What he's done what he's for done others. For us. He'll do for you. Yeah. That is a that is a great, great lyric for us as caregivers to remember in those moments when we're so discouraged. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. He'll pardon it is you. no secret what God can do. God can you know who wrote it? Yeah, that's the bonus question. Do you know who wrote it, Faye? I think it was Stuart Hamlin. It was. Did you know he had run for president? No, I did not. However, I actually met his brother one time, and I was just, I was just shocked. Um, but that was another circumstance. I did not, I, uh, I did not. He has written many songs, and they've he always, did. they've always blessed my entire family. My mother, who's in heaven now, and my dad. But I wanted to tell you that your plan is a blessing to me because. I have been playing piano for a long time, many years, but I I hang on all your chords. So uh, I'm just listening to, to the chords you, you play, and it, it's a blessing to me. Well, that's very, very kind of you to say so. Thank you. I, I will throw a lot of that credit of my chords and uh, at, at my piano professor, John Arne, uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, who I still stay in touch with. He was my piano professor in college. And he taught me how to um, better play some of these songs. And I like to change up the chords because I think it gives a little bit more texture to the song and then helps us better connect with the song. Because sometimes uh, people will, will, when they plunk out a song, you know, they'll... Um, and, and I hate that. I mean, it, come on. It's a great lyric. Let's Let's take our time with it. And I threw in a, that's a major seven chord. And then I throw in the, uh, the five over four. And then the, here's a chord right here, a flat nine. Yes. And so it just gives a lot more texture. And then it hopefully then will anchor the song better in our lives, you know, and, and that's, that's why I do what I do. And I love to take these hymns and these old songs and give them a little bit more, uh, Put a little bit more mustard on them, if you will, <laughs> and, and sometimes some hot sauce. But but not to not to get so inside musically that it loses the texture of the song. The, the point is the melody, and one of the things that my professor used to instruct us to do, and he still does, play the song with one finger. That's it. Just play the melody, uh -huh. one finger, as at as, as, as first, and play it as expressively as you can with one finger. And, and for a pianist, that is almost torture. That's a lot of work mm -hmm. because we're so used to all of our fingers going. But when we do it with one finger, it teaches us the importance of that melody and how to better get the melody to sing. And then we do everything around the melody. And and so that that's that's his philosophy, and I think it's worked out pretty well. That's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And Just thank one you finger, for the so. show. Well, thank you, Faye. And, and uh, do you play at your church or anything? Yes, I do. And I've played a long time. And um, there have been times when I got so discouraged playing at the piano that I thought, I'll never play again. Have you ever <laughs> experienced that? <laughs> you just yes. make so many mistakes, you think, I'll just never get up there again. That's the last time. 
I, 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 I share that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there are also times yeah. when I'm when I'm so discouraged in life that all I can do sometimes is go to the piano and play. That's true. And I don't even That's true. I don't even have the words, and I'll just go through the mm-hmm. hymnal or whatever, and I'll just play. And then it helps settle yeah. my heart down. That's so and, true. You can go to the piano and start playing and, and worshiping God. And um, you can just cry at the piano and nobody knows except you and God. It's just a form of worship. It is. Uh, David David set that stage for us way back when he would just sit out and sing and play out in the, the wilderness while t- tending sheep. And, yes. um, and, and I think that, that music... Um, Hans Christian Andersen said, uh, where words fail, music speaks. And yes. I, I live by that. I love that. And so music is a big part of my life. And, and I thank you all for indulging me while I play these songs because I, I, I feel like that they will stick with us. And I'm hoping that fellow caregivers listening to that will go through the day or the week. And, and when things get really gnarly, you'll say, you know, it is no secret what God can yes. do, what he's That's done beautiful. for others. He'll do for for you, you know, and if you could just hold on to that lyric with arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do, and that is um, that's, uh, that's true. That, that, that's that's why I do these songs. They're they're wonderful songs that we have somehow allowed to get too much dust on them in our churches yeah. and so forth. And and it's it's time to bring them out and and speak and introduce them with some some clarity and, and maybe some, some better chords. You know, I, I used to kid my pastor back in Nashville. I, I was playing one of those flat nine chords and, you know, and I was doing that and I, I looked at him and he was, he was walking across the front there before the, I would play as people were coming in. And I whispered to him, I said, you know, I can get thrown out of some churches for that chord right there. <laughs> he would start laughing. And, uh, but you know, I, I love I love these hymns and um and thank you all for indulging me and and Faith thank you very much for getting the song. Well, thank you for having your program and and for your family, your wife and God bless you for everything you do for all the caregivers out there. Well, thank you very much for that. All righty. Well, this is Peter Rosenberger. This is Hope for the Caregiver and the song is It is no secret. Do you know that? It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. And I think that that's a a very appropriate song for us as as caregivers to to hang on to. Uh, It it all starts with with our relationship with God. You can try to do this as a caregiver on your own strength. It is unsustainable. That's 35 years of experience saying that. It is unsustainable. But once you understand the inexhaustible, start to engage with the inexhaustible love and grace and mercy of God through Christ, you are strengthened and equipped to continue doing this in ways that you never even dreamed possible. And you go back to that prayer that Father said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And that's our starting point. We got uh, more of your calls that we'll answer and more to go on the show. This is Hope for the Caregiver, 888-589-8840. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hope for the Caregiver here on American Family Radio. This is the show for caregivers, about caregivers, hosted by a caregiver, all about strengthening the family caregiver. Healthy caregivers make better caregivers. It's just that simple. And if you are torqued up in your own heart that you're just so full of tension, so full of angst, so full of fear and dread, how in the world are you going to be able to to care for another human being to do this, to, to, to sustain this over time? You can't. And it always starts at the heart level. If your heart is a train wreck, guess what the rest of you looks like? It's only a matter of time before your wallet, your body, your relationships, your profession, and all of these things collapse under the strain. And so we start on this show on a heart level of understanding these truths in God that Scripture lays out of how to navigate through these very painful realities without collapsing 
uh, through fear or despair or, or, or getting ourselves so worked up over rage and resentment. And these are things that, that affect us as family caregivers. I, I was talking with someone last night and and they were discussing you know the way we we interact with loved ones and so forth and and they had a, a someone who was dealing with alcoholism and and she said I, I don't know whether I should yell at her or or fuss at her or whatever and I said step back for just a moment alcoholism this disease of, of addiction has overtaken this individual and you can yell at them, you can shame them, you can berate them, you can do all those kinds of things, but you might as well be just arguing with diabetes. You know, I, I, I see it's, if you take it out of the behavior issue and look at it from a, from an impairment issue or a disease or an affliction issue, it, it helps you understand the concept a little bit more. My wife's missing both of her legs. I cannot argue with amputation. It would be stupid and inappropriate for me to in any way malign her for not being able to, to walk in a normal manner because her legs are gone. And we can wrap our minds around that. But when you're dealing with a behavior issue of somebody who has mental illness or somebody who has a, an addiction, we want to help just shake them and, and, and help them snap out of it and just make a better choice, Un, not understanding that we can't. We're, this is beyond us. And we get ourselves all worked up thinking somehow we can, we can go in there and fix this thing. And we can't. And I go back to the story I had with the farmer playing the flute. He was trying to get the, 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 the chickens to lay more eggs. But they didn't lay any more eggs with the flute or, or with anything else. It was, just, it, was, it was beyond his control. Once he's done what he can do, he gives them the food, he gives them the water, and then, then chickens got to do what chickens do. As he was playing his flute for them, he realized he was making better music and he was becoming better at his instrument. He was changing. And that's the goal for us as caregivers to realize that there are things that are just way beyond our abilities. Most things are. In fact, the only thing that we really have control over are our thoughts, our words, our deeds. That's really all we have control over. And so if we're so busy trying to force someone else to change or improve or stop acting in a certain way, we are spending all of our time trying to do something that is not ours to do. And it always comes back to a heart level. Okay, where are we in this with Christ? Are we understanding the change that is going on in our life that is available to us can we live peacefully in this? When Elijah, after he had had his big encounter with uh, the prophets of Baal, he ran and he, he you know, fell asleep. And the, the angel of the Lord came and brought him something to eat, but he, he rested up, took a nap. When Daniel was in the lion's den, he was able to sleep at night. He, you know, woke up the next morning and told the king, hey, look, we're all good here. When Jesus was in the boat, he took a nap. There's a scriptural precedent for us settling down and just taking a nap and just relaxing. There are things going on around us that we have no control over. And if you notice on the news and things such as that, that they have a vested interest in getting you ramped up over something you can't fix. And, and, and keeping us in a perpetual state of outrage. Whereas Scripture comes along and speaks to us on a spirit level, on a heart level, to keep to to help facilitate us staying in a perpetual state of trust, in a perpetual state of resting in God, that I'm not going to get torqued up about things that have uh, I have no control over. And as a family caregiver, you understand this in ways that maybe others don't get the opportunity to because we live with it relentlessly. It never goes away. And so we are, we are confronted with this on a daily, sometimes hourly basis. On my CD, uh, I put a, 
I need thee every hour on there. Somebody said, why'd you put that on there? I said, because there's no song that says I need thee every minute. <laughs> so I had to go with I need thee every hour. But, but we are confronted with this relentlessly. Now, you either make peace with this or you're going to go barking mad. And you're going to end up being so filled with resentment or despair that you can't function. And I go back to our scripture today. Jesus said, if you believe, all things are possible to one who believes, to him who believes. And the father child cried out, and this is our prayer. This is mine. I, I love this prayer. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. You know, and, and, and crying out to God is in itself an act of faith. And it's not how much faith you have. It is the object of your faith. What are you believing? Who are you believing in? What does this mean? Ezekiel eleven nineteen states, And I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I'll remove the heart of stone from their, uh, from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. In other words, we're being transformed. We're being changed through this if we trust in him to do this. And, and somehow we think, okay, if God will right every wrong, then I can be at peace. And that is not what Scripture teaches. Scripture is teaching. He is going to right all this thing. One day there will be none of these things. We know this. But in the meantime, he's inviting us to trust him as he works his redemption out in his way, in his time, in his plan. And so once we get a hold of that principle, however timidly we are, we are doing it. Once we get a hold of that principle, then it changes the way we approach the situations our loved ones deal with. And we stop trying to force what we think is best on someone else and trust God to work his best in their life and in our life. And that's when we can go back to the song that we did today. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. And it starts with the understanding of the word pardon. Because if you are somehow coming to God thinking, look, God, fix this, you know, then I'll be happy. And God is seeing a greater problem in you. There, there is a greater issue in your life and in my life than just the angst we feel over our loved ones. However big a deal it is of what we're dealing with as caregivers, there's a greater issue. And understanding his promises, his word, his changing power in that is the starting point. Gracie and I both tell you there are worse things than amputation. There are worse things than orthopedic challenges her body's an orthopedic train wreck and we'll both tell you there are worse things than that there are worse things than alzheimer's and he came to to address that issue that was the purpose of the cross and then all the other issues will flow from that you tracking with me And that's why I pull out these hymns and these songs to help drive that point home in ways that maybe I can't do very well because others have come along and they've done this. A, a, a while back, uh, several weeks back, we did, Oh God, our help in ages past. Oh God, our help in ages past. Well, that alone implies that there, there have been times when we have seen God's provision in ages past, in the, in the past, long ago, and we can rely on that. And, and we look at all these individuals who have walked through these things and we're standing on their shoulders. We have their lives to, to, to look to. And then in the book of Hebrews, it says, there's a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on. Do you know that there's a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering you on right now? As you're a caregiver. They, that, that, that all these things that you're doing where you see nobody else has seen, seen you doing it. In the middle of the night, you're cleaning up just 
horrendous messes. Or you're taking abuse from someone. Or you're so tired that you can't even stand. Do you know there's a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering you on? This is the message of Scripture to us as family caregivers. And my passion on this show is to say this in a way that we as caregivers can understand this. I didn't have anybody speaking to me like this for the, well, really for the entire journey. (laughs) I've had to aggregate a lifetime of this and try to somehow make sense of it in the caregiver ease. But because I speak fluent caregiver, I'm able to take these principles now and offer them to my fellow caregivers in a way they can understand. And this is why we do the show. This is why we do all the things that we do. Because I understand how lonely, how painful, how discouraging this is. But I also understand how deep and how powerful and how transforming the gospel is. Not as much as I'm going to understand it, but I understand it a lot more than I used to. Even as a caregiver. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. This is Hope for the Caregiver. This is Peter Rosenberger, 888-589-8840. We'll be right back. Have you ever struggled to trust God when lousy things happen to you? I'm Gracie Rosenberger, and in 1983, I experienced a horrific car accident leading to 80 surgeries and both legs amputated. I questioned why God allowed something so brutal to happen to me. But over time, my questions changed, and I discovered courage to trust God. That understanding, along with an appreciation for quality prosthetic limbs, led me to establish Standing with Hope. For more than a dozen years, we've been working with the government of Ghana and West Africa, equipping and training local workers to build and maintain quality prosthetic limbs for their own people. On a regular basis, we purchase and ship equipment and supplies, and with the help of inmates in a Tennessee prison, we also recycle parts from donated limbs. All of this is to point others to Christ, the source of my hope and strength. Please visit StandingWithHope.com to learn more and participate in lifting others up. That's StandingWithHope.com. I'm Gracie, and I am Standing With Hope. Welcome back to Hope for the Caregiver. This is Peter Rosenberger, 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840 if you want to be a part of the show. That's Gracie. By the way, um, i got a young man we're trying to help provide. You heard Gracie's story and uh, a young man we're trying to provide a leg for over in Kenya. We normally work in Ghana. Kenya's on the other side of the continent. And uh, we can't travel right now with COVID. I'm still not in a... Gracie, even though Gracie says she's going, I'm like, no, I'm not taking you over there right now, Gracie. You're going to have to just wait. <laughs> and so, but we're still sending supplies. We're, uh, we've got a shipment that's going out. Actually, this this week coming up here, uh, they got it all packed up at a prison. And thank you all for the folks who have been supporting. There's still time if you want to uh, help support sending these things over. We recycle prosthetic limbs at a prison where inmates strip them down, and then we use the, uh, the parts that can be recycled and send that over. And then we also sponsor a patient um, when when they can't afford a limb or something, if, if they're not even in the country we work in, we try to work with the local provider and help sponsor that. And this is a guy named Godfrey in Kenya. And uh, he just was evaluated yesterday. They're sending me a report on on what it's going to be to to help him uh, get this leg. And if you want to be a part of that, you can go out to hopeforthecaregiver.com, just see where it says Standing With Hope. And uh, you can see how to do that, support the show, support Godfrey, support the shipment, whatever's on your heart to do. Um, I wanted to also, uh, so that's hopeforthecaregiver.com, and go out there and you see all that there. And then we'll send you a copy of Gracie's CD, just as our gift to you for doing it. I wanted to ring, uh, talk about the um, lyrics of the verse on It Is No Secret that we've been doing today. The chimes of time ring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have longed for added strength, 
your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I have news for you. Um, let's see how that goes. It's uh, the verse on that, uh, but the chimes, what, you may have longed for added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I have news for you. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Nancy in Ohio. Nancy, good morning. How are you feeling? I'm blessed, very blessed. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. What's on your heart and mind today? Well, uh, today is the sixth anniversary of my husband's passing into glory. And so he's, that's much on my mind today. And I was his caregiver for a lot of long years as he was uh, had, a condi- had conditions that were deteriorating. And there were times when I was in despair and only the music, Jesus loves me, it is no secret, it is well with my soul. All of those songs were just a blessing and an encouragement and a strength for for my walk. <laughs> and it was the path that God had me on, and he reassured me of that. And so I take rest in knowing that I did what God had asked me to do. Well, you did, and those you're right, those songs... They, 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 these songs that we lean lean on and that we cling to were not written in a vacuum. They were written by people who wrestled with these same things. And this is where they landed. Um, in the second verse on It Is No Secret, there is no night, for in his light you never walk alone. Always feel at home, wherever you may go. There is no power can conquer you while God is on your side. Take him at his yeah. promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what God can do. Isn't that a great text? That is a great text. And, and the, you know, the words of the songs, every morning when I have my devotions, I sing at least one hymn. I have a hymn no right by my Bible, and I pick out at least one hymn, and I sing it because the words of those old hymns are just so uh, uplifting uh, give it, give you a sen- the sense of security, knowing you're in His hands. And what did you sing this morning? Nothing like the, the songs that that have come down through the ages. What did you sing? What hymn did you sing this morning? Um, it is well with my soul. Oh, I love that one. Um... Sing that chorus there. Little slower. It is way. It's just such a great hymn that has sustained so many millions upon millions upon millions of people, and it was written out of such heartache. Yes. It was written out of such heartache. You know, Peter, uh, if you can't sing, just pick up a hymnal and just read the, the 
pro- the poetry of those of those hymns, and the, even that does an amazing thing. I often do that if I if I don't know the tune or my voice isn't doing, and in, right now it's not doing very well. But just read the words, and they will just have such a blessing on you. That sustains me. Well, they do. We have a treasure trove that we have um, almost ignored in our churches today of these hymns. And they were written out of of great understanding and insight, and a lot of them were written out of great pain. And and yet God um, uh, gifted these individuals to write beautiful text, beautiful music that has stood around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's not that I'm, you know, biased towards things that are, you know, written today. There's beautiful things that are being written today, but you know, I like to cook with, um, with an iron skillet quite a bit. And one of the things about cooking with an iron skillet is that an iron skillet requires seasoning. You have to season the the, the skillet. You can't just throw it in a dishwasher or things such as that, and and it has to be done well. Songs are the same way. Music's the same way. Hymns are the same way. That requires some seasoning um, to to go to be able to have that endurance factor. And when you think about, you know, when you ask somebody what songs do you want played at your funeral, well, they want one of these old hymns. Yeah, you know, exactly. and and they, um, in fact, I, on the uh, interview I did with William Lee Golden in the uh, from the Oak Ridge Boys, I closed out the interview with them singing uh, Amazing Grace at the funeral service of George Herbert Walker Bush. And they were very close friends with the former president and, and w- were asked to sing at his funeral. And pr- you probably saw that on the news. And I closed out the um, the interview with the recording of them doing that, the live recording. And just listen to the simplicity of, of four-part harmony singing, When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. And And... And I think this is the the message for us as caregivers that we we are going through these very painful, painful things. I get it. But Scripture anchors us into something eternal. And the moment, we live in the moment, but we have the perspective of eternity, which gives, it gives meaning to the moment. So as we do these things, as you go through these tasks that you do week in and week out as caregivers, and as you do this, if you'll just hang on to whatever phrase that you can of the music we've done, it is no secret what God can do. You've heard it here from Nancy, who did this with her husband in the, the days when she was so low. And yet Everybody. it is well, it is no secret. Jesus loves me. You know, all these wonderful hymns that we've, we've been playing here on the show for some time, they mean something in the midst of these very very difficult circumstances. And we would ask that you hang on. And if you feel like your faith is weak, well, I've got very good news for you. Because Jesus said to this father, if you believe all things are possible to him who believes and the father cried out and said, Lord, and he said he cried out with tears. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He is near to the brokenhearted. And this is the nature of our of our Savior. And, you know, I, 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 I've said this often. I speak fluent caregiver. 35 years of this, you'll learn how to speak caregiver. I speak fluent caregiver. But I had to learn to speak caregiver. It's our Savior's native tongue. That's who he is. That's who our Savior is. And it is no secret what he can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Nancy, thank you so much for the call and for being such an encouragement to me this morning. That's just this beautiful testimony of your journey and your life. And thank you very much for that. It's a, it's, it's a treat to be able to come to you each week. Thank you for it. I've got a special July 4th show that we're doing next week. We'll be off, but I've got an interview with someone that I think you'll find very, very meaningful. And then there's always more out at our podcast, hopeforthecaregiver.com. And we look forward to seeing you. Healthy caregivers make better caregivers. Today's a great day to start being healthy. We'll see you next time. This is Peter Rosenberger. This is John Butler, and I produce Hope for the Caregiver with Peter Rosenberger. 
Some of you know the remarkable story of Peter's wife, Gracie, and recently Peter talked to Gracie about all the wonderful things that have emerged from her difficult journey. Take a listen. Gracie, when you envisioned doing a prosthetic limb outreach, did you ever think that inmates would help you do that? Not in a million years. When you go to the facility run by Core Civic and you see the faces of these inmates that are working on prosthetic limbs that you have helped collect from all over the country that you put out the plea for and they're disassembling. You see all these legs, like what you have, your own prosthetic and legs. And arms, too. And, and every, arms. Everything when you it. see all this, what does that do to you? Makes me cry because I see the smiles on their faces, and I know, I know what it is to be locked someplace where you can't get out without somebody else allowing you to get out. Of course, being in the hospital so much and so long. And so um, the, these men are so glad that they get to be doing, um, as, as one band said, something good finally with my hands. Did you know before you became an amputee that parts of prosthetic limbs could be recycled? No, I had no idea. You know, I thought of peg leg. I thought of wooden legs. I never thought of titanium and carbon legs and flex feet and sea legs and all that. I never thought about that. As you watch these inmates participate in something like this, knowing that they're they're helping other people now walk, they're providing the means for these supplies to get over there, what does that do to you just on a heart level? I wish I could explain to the world what I see in there. And I wish that I could be able to go and say, the, this guy right here, he needs to go to Africa with us. I, I never not feel that way. I, every time, you know, you always make me have to leave. I don't want to leave them. I, I feel like I'm at home with them. And I feel like that we have a common bond that I would have never expected that only God could put together. Now that you've had an experience with it, what do you think of the faith-based programs that Core Civic offers? I think they're just absolutely awesome. And I think every prison out there should have faith-based programs like this because the return rate of the men that are involved in this particular faith-based program and the other ones like it, but I know about this one, are is just an amazingly low rate compared to those who don't have them. And I think that that says so much. That doesn't have anything to do with me. It just has something to do with God using somebody broken to help other broken people. If people want to donate a used prosthetic limbs, whether from a loved one who passed away or, you know, somebody who outgrew them, you've donated some of your own for them to do how do how do they do that? Where do oh, they find it? Please go to standingwithhope.com slash recycle. Standingwithhope.com slash recycle. Thanks, Gracie.